This is Jason T. Ingram. The date today is January 2nd, 2017. I'm coming to you from my little house in Milwaukee, Oregon, and it is a very cold day. Mind you, the puddles are just starting to freeze, and Oregonians are freaking out because it's a very mild climate out here. Meanwhile, in Minneapolis, they're laughing at us. Anyways, this is the first of uh, some video logs that I'm going to be doing about, basically, how does a disabled guy get his life back? Or I never really had a career in doing what I love to do full time and being successful at it. So I'm documenting as much as I can to show people what I'm doing and to try to get exposure to my work. And I've been, oh, I've got over a decade worth of creative projects that I've done. Some of them are really shitty and some of them I think uh, will really help people and really bless them and hopefully make some people laugh too. So, right now is kind of interesting. Um, it seems like every day when I sit down in my messy office here, I'm, you know, starting to go over what are the priorities, what do I need to do, and uh, and then the way it's been lately has been like, okay, when am I going to have my first panic attack? What's going to set me off? How sick is it going to make me? How unproductive is it going to make me? And what is all the stuff I need to do to try to recover from that so I can get back to work and start doing what I do? Because this is a huge part of me starting a business. I just can't sit down and work. Um, people that are mentally disabled and that, that live with trauma, especially panic attacks, it is very hard to manage. And uh, mental health is so different for every peer. And when I mean peer, I mean other people that live with mental illnesses of various uh, types and things, various levels of functionality. Um, so for me, uh, my functionality um, in the last year or so has been very low. However, I have really been cured of a lot of physical problems. And that's another thing I want to start documenting too, is how did I cure myself from digestion issues and from everything from... Um, um, uh, uh, the immune system is another thing. I used to get sick like four or five times a year and that doesn't happen anymore. But I'm still really fucked up in the head and the more I work and the more I put myself out there, the more I put myself into stressful and traumatic situations, um, the harder it is for me to function. And so uh, it is walking a tightrope. In fact, I've been having uh, dreams lately of doing things in water, floating on top of water or in the water. And I think it's really interesting that sometimes my life feels like I'm trying to get things done and any second now I'm going to fall in the water. <laughs> I'm going to have to get back out and dry off and get back into doing what I do. So, uh, yes, I had the first panic attack of 2017. And it's a little funny how it, what triggered me because I never know what is going to trigger me. It's, it's, it's really interesting and it's usually the smallest thing. It's typically when there's, uh, somebody that I'm working with or talking to and they throw something at me that I'm not prepared for and there's conflict or I, I take it as conflict or I feel threatened or they feel threatened by me for some reason. Um, today I got a call on my cell phone from an out-of-state number and it wasn't blocked um, so I answered it and uh, it was a telemarketing scam. It was one of those credit card scams and uh, boy they they are really really um, uh, the kind of scams that are going on now, they really know how to trigger people. And right away, it sounded very professional. There's a woman's voice, and it was, a, you know, has to do with, oh, there's been some potential fraudulent account activity on your credit card, and you need to call this and all this kind of stuff. And here's the thing. I had just made a credit card payment for this class that I signed up. I signed up for um, Business Foundations 1 with the... Um, programs they do at Mercy Corps, trying to get people like me that have had a hard time getting back into society for whatever reason, like people getting out of jail, or they came here from another country, or people like me that have been living on disability for a long time. So that was kind of scary. I sent them some info about like 
what I want to do in my business, a little bit about my background. I paid them 200 bucks on my credit card for this class, and I'm real excited about it, but that means, you know, going to downtown once a week for these long classes, it scares me. There's a lot of things that scare me about going out on a regular basis and being around all these people and new people and new things, and oh my god. So the whole thing really freaks me out anyways. And then I get this call within like five or ten minutes of signing up for that thing. So you got a fraudulent account on your credit card. <laughs> and you know what? I just, I can't prevent the panic attack from happening. I just have to let it happen and do whatever I can to try. I mean, I'm still kind of, well, I think I'm sweating also because I went and took a brisk walk and, you know, I try to get my heartbeat up and I try to work up a, a sweat. And so that's part of that too. But here's the thing is that um, my feet are so cold that I had to put, and this is like the second or third time just today I had to use my <laughs> Sauna socks, $13 on Amazon. They're microwavable slippers. They're fucking awesome. <laughs> because what happens with some people when we have panic attacks is that our body goes into this mode where it's like it's trying to protect the vital organs from freezing or something like that. So even if it's in the middle of summer, whatever it is, uh, my, I lose the blood circulation to my hands and feet. And uh, today, though, my hands haven't been too bad. I woke up and I wore some gloves and things like that and held a cup of coffee that was hot. And I so I did a pretty good job getting my hands to stay warm today. My feet, though, have been hard, even though I took a walk outside. Like, and I was running. I was, I was like running up a hill. <laughs> and I still couldn't shake this one off. So, oh, I've got some good coping skills and I've got some coping skills that are sort of like my... Uh, emergency ones that uh, aren't quite as therapeutic, but, uh, well, I'll show you. <laughs> Anyways, I try not to smoke weed until sundown until I'm sort of getting ready for bed and winding down because it really can fog my brain. Um, but I might uh, do some CBD stuff. Sometimes I do it through the afternoon just enough in order to get me to cope a, a little bit so I can get back to work. Because sometimes it'll enable me to do work, and sometimes it'll get me so I can't stay focused. So um, that's another thing, is responsible pot use um, is, is something else I'll be talking about as well. So anyways, um, this week what I wanted to focus on is organizing my life. Because I can't start a business when I have piles of shit all over my office and all over my house. So um, my angel, I'm uh, paying him to come over and to help organize a few things. And, um, and it's great because I don't really have any like super deadlines right now. I have no gigs on the agenda for like ever, which is awesome. Uh, which is, and it's also kind of depressing considering I was playing like almost on a weekly basis for most of this year, but it totally burned me out. And that's a whole nother story as well. But it was good. It was good to see that I can get physically healthy enough to be on stage and be in front of these crowds like on a regular basis and not end up in a mental institution. So I'm trying to pat myself on the back as much as I can. <laughs> and I got this sweet new soul patch today too. So. Anyways, thank you for listening to my vlog. Uh, I hope to, in the future, uh, about every week or so, to check in and let everybody know how I'm doing. And uh, I've got some really cool things in store, too. I have some I idea for some serial shows uh, that I want to uh, produce on YouTube. I'm already doing a, a couple now. There's one called Two Hour Arrangements, where I spend an hour or two on a song. Most of these songs I'm familiar with, but I try to get songs that are obscure, because a lot of times, you know, you Google a song. How does somebody play this on the guitar or the piano? Because I'm learning and I can't figure it out. But if I choose, like, some obscure Brian Eno tune that somebody might want to do sometime, or it might introduce some people to some new music, too. I also have some uh, comedy um, serial programs that I want to do, some informative ones, some mental health ones, some wellness stuff, lots of comedy, and the more I produce these, the more I'm going to get more hits and, and more people involved, and I'm going to learn and get feedback about my production skills and things like that, which are eh, not, not too great right now. And so I'm really excited about this year. In fact, uh, I have to be, because there's not a lot of people that have a lot of hope right now, especially those 
that are disadvantaged and uh, for whatever reason, things like that, that have a lot of stigma. And uh, we're all freaking out here in the far lefty Portland. So uh, I'm, that's a big thing I'm trying to focus on too is, hey, let's let all of this shit going on motivate us to do something really cool. Get some new ideas and some new methods. And then hopefully we're going to, oh, 10 minutes. Bye-bye.